nature is in crisis. Being destroyed at a rate unprecedented in human history. Coming together to reverse nature loss isn't a choice, it's a must. 75% of the Earth's ice-free land surface has already been significantly altered by human activity. We've lost half of the world's corals and more than 85% of our wetlands. Wildlife populations have plummeted by an average of 69% since 1970. This devastation doesn't only affect our one home, it endangers all our lives and livelihoods. Three billion people are already threatened by land degradation. Four billion people experience severe water scarcity for at least one month every year. And more than half of our global GDP, over 58 trillion US dollars, is at risk from nature loss. So how can we overcome one of the greatest challenges of our time? Solving a challenge as immense as nature loss won't happen overnight. But we have to start somewhere. The most important first step is to establish a clear and ambitious goal, a guiding light to focus our efforts. Just like how the Paris Agreement united the world against the climate crisis, committing to limit global temperature increased to 1.5 degrees Celsius. We need to reverse nature loss, ending the decade with more nature than we started with, not less. By reaching this goal, being nature positive by 2030, we can prove that change is possible. Supporting nature's full recovery in the decades to come and securing a livable planet for future generations. Moving to a nature positive world is also crucial to achieving the UN's Sustainable Development Goals and helping avoid an era of global boiling. As nature is one of our biggest allies against the climate crisis, pulling greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere and locking it away in plants, soils and the ocean. We have our goal, so what's the plan? The good news is, we've already got one. In December 2022, at the 15th United Nations Biodiversity Conference, COP15, representatives from 196 nations came together to adopt a landmark agreement, the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework, also known as the GBF, uniting the world behind a clear mission to halt and reverse nature loss by 2030. Let's break down how the GBF aims to do this and what governments have committed to do. First, we must take immediate action to conserve the species and spaces most threatened by nature loss. We need to hold the human-induced extinction of species, taking steps to recover and conserve populations of the most critically endangered animals and plants. This includes ensuring that the harvesting and trade of wild species is sustainable, safe and legal. We must also protect the spaces and places that are home to our planet's incredible biodiversity, which is why the GBF calls for the conservation of at least 30% of the world's lands, inland waters and ocean, as well as the restoration of 30% of degraded ecosystems by 2030. To conserve these habitats, we'll need to work together with the indigenous peoples and local communities living in and around them, fully recognizing both their leadership and knowledge, as well as their roles and their rights to these spaces and resources. But conserving the remaining species and spaces we have left can only go so far. To truly heal nature and ensure its full recovery, we must tackle the drivers of nature loss head on. Our production sectors, including agriculture and food systems, fisheries, forestry, infrastructure, and resource extraction are some of the biggest drivers of nature loss. We need to take urgent steps to transform these sectors so that they work with nature rather than against it. Out of these, our food systems are most to blame. The way we currently produce and consume food drives 80% of all deforestation and 70% of fresh water use. The GBF aims to reduce this unsustainable footprint of production and consumption, while making sure there is enough healthy and nutritious food for everyone and nobody goes hungry. 
This means shifting demand for products that have the biggest impacts on nature. Commodities like palm oil, soy, beef and overfished seafood to more sustainable choices. Innovative methods of agriculture and aquaculture must also be explored so that our food systems are not only planet-friendly, but efficient and productive long-term. To reduce our footprint, we must also cut our food waste by at least half. Currently, even though we already produce enough food for 10 billion people, the estimated world population in 2050, a third gets thrown away, all while more habitats are converted into farmland we don't need. But we can't talk about these drivers of nature loss without talking about the underlying mechanism that powers them, finance. The global finance system powers the economic activities that affect our planet. It's what enables oil companies to drill in the Arctic, agribusinesses to clear tropical forests, or dams to be built across free-flowing rivers. Yet it's also the key to restoring landscapes, supporting community-led conservation, or helping small farmers to increase yields in a sustainable way. Money, so they say, makes the world go round. But if we change where the money goes, we can do so much more, making a positive difference to the future of people and nature. In support of this, the GBF aims to redirect the flow of finance away from activities that harm our planet toward those that heal. At the same time, it commits wealthier countries to provide more financial resources to developing ones, supporting their conservation efforts as they are most affected by nature loss. The GBF also encourages businesses and financial institutions to invest in nature and regularly monitor, assess and disclose the biodiversity-related impacts of their work. This sustainable future makes economic sense. For every $1 spent on nature restoration, at least $9 in economic benefit can be expected in return. In fact, the United Nations estimates that investing in nature can generate 10 trillion US dollars in business value and create 395 million jobs. Simply put, conserving nature isn't about benefiting nature at the expense of people. It's about benefiting people as well, a win-win and not just in the realm of business, but across the whole of society. This is why the GBF calls for a human rights-based approach to conservation, ensuring that reversing natural laws supports and promotes, rather than disrupts, human livelihoods and human rights, including the right to a healthy environment. Indigenous peoples and local communities in particular are some of the most important guardians of nature and depend directly on the habitats we aim to conserve. So recognition and support for their rights to land and resources is essential, while ensuring that both are sustainably used and managed. A rights-based approach also means actively involving indigenous peoples and local communities in decision-making and promoting equal access to opportunities and resources, especially for groups not often recognized, such as women, girls and youth. So there you have some of the steps needed to reverse nature laws by 2030 included in the Kunmin Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework. But a plan is only effective if it is acted upon. It is now up to our governments to swiftly move from agreement to action. The targets set by the GBF should be a floor and not a ceiling. Governments can and should go above and beyond to develop their own national plans and targets. And most importantly, take the concrete steps needed to achieve them. Nature and impacts on nature must become a permanent priority across all aspects of their decision-making so that we can all live prosperously and harmoniously with our planet. To support the actions of our governments, we do have a role to play. Every city, every business and every person must do what they can to turn the tide on nature loss and secure a nature-positive world this decade. Though we may not solve the nature crisis overnight, that shouldn't stop us from starting today. We are, and always have been, part of the equation. We've now got a formula, so let's be part of the solution.